Hello and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to talk about the dynamic host configuration protocol, which is otherwise referred to as DHCP. So we'll start by looking at the purpose of this protocol. What does it do and why do we need it? And then after that, we're going to take a look at the functionality of DHCP. Um, specifically, we'll look at some of the messaging involved and figure out exactly how it accomplishes what it's supposed to do. Okay, so a good place to start is by realizing that all devices need an IP address in order to communicate with each other. And so as a network administrator, you have two choices to administer IPs. The first one is the manual approach, and that's where you log in and you assign the IP information to the device, and that's it. So you are actually doing the work. And an example of that is perhaps on your PC, you can configure uh, PCs for IP addresses. You can configure the routers and switches as well, web servers. Pretty much anything can be configured manually. Well, that works okay, but what if your network's really big? And what if you have a lot of users coming and going all day long? The manual approach just wouldn't work. It's not an efficient use of your time, and it probably just doesn't scale very well. So that leads us to the second approach. And the second approach is an automatic approach. What if we had a way to automatically do this for us? So a new user comes online, and that user gets an IP address automatically. Well, that's where DHCP comes in. And the name itself, it's dynamic, and it's all about host configuration. So dynamic host configuration protocol uh, comes into play here. And so DHCP allows us to assign IP address information to a device automatically when it comes on the network. Um, a good example to look at is a PC. Um, perhaps you have a laptop and you move around from different networks throughout the day. You could be at home on your home network. You can then bring your laptop to a cafe and jump on their wireless. And then perhaps you're even at work using the same laptop and you're on yet another network. Well, imagine each time you had to stop and assign IP address information or the administrator of that network had to find an available IP address for you doesn't really work out, right? So you've, prob you've probably used DHCP and not even knowing it. Essentially, this is an easier way and, and requires a lot less human interaction in order to assign IPs. Also, DHCP is pretty useful because it, it can uh, be used to assign more than just an IP address. It assigns the subnet mask uh, that goes along with the IP address. It can also be used to assign a default gateway for a host. It can also tell it which DNS servers to use. There are quite a bit of uh, other fields that can be sent to a client uh, when they're using DHCP. Okay, so that's the purpose, is dynamic host configuration. You're actually dynamically sending configuration information to a host. So now let's go ahead and actually take a look at the functionality and see how DHCP actually works. Okay, so this is our lab setup, and we have a router and a switch, and off of the switch hangs a PC and a DHCP server. And so let's start with the DHCP server. A DHCP server can be a dedicated piece of hardware with a DHCP server running on it. So the server is actually a program, okay? And it can run on a PC, it can run on an actual server, it can actually run on a router or a layer 3 switch as well. So DHCP functionality can be found on many types of different devices. It depends on how you want to design your network. And the DHCP server itself is responsible for allocating IP address information to, to devices that need it. And so really what it does is it keeps a pool or a list of available IPs that are um, available for devices to use. And it manages the process of allocating and sometimes taking back IP addresses. The client, on the other hand, is PC1. And so this is a client-server relationship. And the client is responsible for initiating the process when it needs to get DHCP uh, information, IP information from a DHCP server. The server doesn't initiate it, the client does. So it's the one that kicks things off. And a client can be anything. A client can be a PC. A client can be a router or a switch. Um, so it, it, many devices uh, can be capable of utilizing DHCP, uh, not just a PC. Okay, so now actually let's take a look at the actual process. What actually happens here? And like I said, the client kicks things off. And let's take a look at exactly how. So the first thing that happens 
is the client sends a discovery broadcast message. Really what the client is looking to do is to figure out if there are any DHCP servers on the local area network. And so PC1 here would send out a broadcast message. And by definition, a broadcast goes to each node on the network. In our example, there's only one DHCP server. But in reality, you could have multiple DHCP servers on a particular LAN segment. Okay? So step one, broadcast message to everybody. The PC is essentially just trying to find a DHCP server. So step two involves the server actually responding to this broadcast. And the server sends an offer message. And this offer message is going to actually have an IP in it. It's going to say, yes, you know, hey, here's an IP you can use. Okay? Again, if there were multiple DHCP servers, that PC would get multiple um, offer messages in response. Step three involves the client now sending a request back out onto the network. Now this may seem a little bit confusing because it already discovered, it sent out the discovery message looking for DHCP servers and then it actually got an offer. Now why is it requesting? Doesn't the DHCP server already know it's, it's trying to find something? Well, this is a little bit different. The discovery message is just to just do that, just discover. Whereas the client sending a request message, that's really another broadcast. So again, this um, request goes out to everybody on the network, including the router in this case, even though the router is not involved. And the purpose of the request is to signify which DHCP server has been chosen by the PC. So again, if we had multiple DHCP servers on this local area network, it would be important for all of them to know which one is actually going to be responsible for allocating the IP information. Likewise, the one that is chosen by the PC needs to know that as well, so it can actually then go ahead and do its job. So in this case, router, the router and the switch are not DHCP servers, so this is kind of meaningless to them, but had they been DHCP servers, this would be important information. And so that brings us to the fourth and final step to this process, and that's where the server now sends an acknowledgement back to the PC. Inside this acknowledgement, is additional information about the IP allocation. So there is something called a lease period, and perhaps the other information we talked about, the default gateway, the DNS server, the IP subnet mask, all of that is now definitely contained within the acknowledgement, and that's sent to the PC. Now, a quick moment about the lease period. When you are allocated an IP, it's not forever, although it can be. Lease periods can be adjusted. They can be configured to however long you want. Usually by default on Cisco devices, they are for one day, for 24 hours. And when that lease period is over, then the DHC, DHCP server takes that IP back. It says, okay, well, this is available now. Well, that brings us to a discussion of some other functionality we should talk about. So now that the whole process is complete after these four steps, let's talk about the lease itself. Now, a client can renew a lease if it wants to, and usually about halfway through the lease period, so let's say if it were for 24 hours, at around 12 hours or so, the PC would then initiate a process to go ahead and renew the IP. And it, it, it's kind of a convenient thing to maintain the same IP. Also, a client can go ahead and actually release the information. It can go ahead and notify the DHCP server that it no longer wants to use the allocated IP and for the DHCP server to update its records so that it can use the IP elsewhere as well. So it can renew it to keep using it, or the PC can release it and decide not to use it at all. And overall, that is the DHCP process of how a client initiates and a server allocates IP address information. And that's it. Thanks for watching.